Aloha, welcome to Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech live streaming network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We are your hosts. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome to today's show. The goal of this show is to provide professional and personal development tools and profound insights on how to achieve success in life, career and or business. We are very grateful for all the positive feedback we have received from viewers. One of the viewer comments from our last show was, the show is another example of opening the hearts and minds of viewers that may get inspired to persevere a personal or business decision. You, our viewers and listeners, are our inspiration for the show. Adrian Alfonso, the owner of Aesthetic Dental Designs, was our guest on our last show, and his words of wisdom can be accessed on Newman Consulting Services website, newmanconsultingservices.com, or our landing page, denelia.org. Our theme for today is, I can, I will, end of story. Joining us today in the studio as our honored guest is Lieutenant General John A. Tulin, Jr., United States Marine Corps Forces Pacific Commanding General. Mahalo for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, we're going to put you to the test right away, General. <laughs> okay? I know uh, you've had an illustrious career, and I'd like to ask and have you share with our viewers, when did you decide uh, uh, that you wanted to become a general and why? Well, I, I, I think the question is interesting because I don't think I really ever came in with the objective of being a general. Oh. In fact, uh, and I know today that when you look at the people that we're selecting for positions of responsibility, you could probably fill the bus up with all the newly selected generals, run them over the cliff, and find 16 more or 20 more new generals to <laughs> just fill the, fill the hole. So it's not necessarily who you are. It's, it's kind of a sharing of experiences and things that you bring with, with you that uh, I think eventually kind of improves the institution. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like I, my goal was to be a general. My goal was to be a really good Marine. Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. Yeah. And you accomplished that. Yes. And I, I, think, uh, I think to some degree I have, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So as you were on your path um, and you realized there might be a, an op chance that you might become a general, was there any time during that time when you thought, when you had doubts about it? Well, you know, there's an interesting uh, book that I'm sure you've probably read, Outliers. It's mm -hmm. like, how do people become outliers in their community, in their organization? Mm -hmm. And I think it's a mixture of people you know, people you meet, the timing. I mean, all these things come together. And uh, I, I just feel like uh, in my particular situation, you know, we've been going through 15 years of kind of conflict yes. Oh, yes. with Afghanistan and Iraq. Yes. And during those times, really, where I was and where I was located, I bloomed. Mm -hmm. I, did my, I focused on my job, yeah. which turned into an opportunity to actually serve in some of those conflicts where on occasion I did a good enough job where I got recognized. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of carried it through until right. selection to promotion. There you go. Yeah. Great. So. That's great. So having so many individuals in your charge, how challenging was it for you to stay focused on the mission? That's a great question because I think, you know, this organization has 83,000 Marines. I have two thirds of the Marine Corps out here in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. And that's done by purpose. I mean, the Marine Corps is out here in the Pacific because the Pacific is a very important area for the United States. Mm -hmm. um, but the only way I can do the job is by relying on my subordinates mm -hmm. and making sure that <clears throat> in the Marine Corps, what we talk about is commander's intent. Mm -hmm. People understand generally what your intent, what your goal, what your priorities are. Mm -hmm. And then you let the commanders below you, the leadership mm -hmm. below you kind of disseminate that information. Right. You got to trust them. Yeah. Sometimes it's a leap of faith, particularly, yeah. uh, you know, in some situations out here in the Pacific where uh, a young Lance Corporal that does, a 19-year-old Lance Corporal may do something that could have strategic implications. Right. But you got to sleep. Yeah. So, you know, you got go to you gotta go to bed at night saying, i got good leadership out there that are going to yeah. take care of those young men. Right. Okay. Right. What is your leadership uh, management style? Yeah, I think... Uh, Leadership and management are two different words, I believe. Mm -hmm. the management is doing the right thing, is doing things right, mm -hmm. where leadership is doing the right things. Right. And I, I believe that my effort, <coughs> my focus is on doing the right things. Yes. And uh, my leadership uh, objective is, first of all, to make sure that I know myself. Mm -hmm. okay. I, know, I know what are my uh, 
traits, characteristics, what are the things that uh, I don't do well. I got to understand that. Mm -hmm. And so then I hopefully they can bring people in to help complement those mm -hmm. weaknesses and then shore up my own strengths. Mm -hmm. The second is I think I really got to make sure that the people who work for me know that I care about them. Yeah. They don't really need to know how brilliant I am. <laughs> they just need to know how I care. Right. And quite frankly, sometimes I try to cloak some of that brilliance because yeah. it may not always be there. Yeah. You're not modest at all, John. No. I see that. It's the second half of the question. Um, so, would you like to ask Yeah, it? no, go, go ahead. ahead. Okay, so um, what, a, uh, what part did visualizing and managing self-talk as far as, because, you know, you had a lot going on. And you really, really, you know, that one of the big things is just as a small business owner, it's hard to sleep at night, but you mm. had like so much more under your command. And so how did visualizing, self-talk, uh, play in your decision-making and high-pressure environments? Right. You know, that's interesting because what I talk about to my folks is that I have to help them understand where we're going. Right. So I, gotta have, I have to have a vision. But more importantly is I have to be able to transfer that vision to them. Right. Because if it's just in my head, it's not going to go anywhere. Correct. i got to make sure it's in their head. Correct. And so the good part about it is if you do think through the, that problem and you help them visualize. For example, when we crossed the, bag, the, the berm into Baghdad, mm -hmm. I needed them to understand what they were going to face. They were going to face you know, live fire. They were going to yeah. face civilian interference. They were going to face uh, looting and burning in the city. So if, if I was able to transfer that image to them, and then they go and do it, mm -hmm. and they see, holy mackerel, what the boss told us he was going to see, mm -hmm. we're actually seeing. Mm -hmm. Hey, he must know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And so then that confidence and the leadership kind of just mm -hmm. kind of just perpetuates itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what do you feel are, are common organizational mis misperceptions between the civilians and the military personnel? I've thought about that, and I think that uh, the fact that the military as a profession of arms mm -hmm. is sometimes considered uh, an organization that seeks to towards violence rather than peace. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a misperception. Mm -hmm. Because really, until you've actually served in a com combat and serves in conflict, then you understand you don't ever want to yeah. be in war. So true. You, want, you want to avoid it at all costs. And so our objective is to make sure that we train hard, that we ready ourselves, that we deter by our presence in the Pacific, for example, conflict. But we never, we'll be the last ones in line to actually recommend, hey, we got to go to war. Understood. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, <coughs> as you talk about leadership, uh, you know, you need to have a lot of mental strength for leadership, I believe, because... Um, you know, you've got so much that you're responsible for. So, so and also building a team yeah. is very important. Yeah, how, how do you build a team, General? Right. And, uh, you know, how do you get everybody on board to your vision? It's, uh, it's selflessness, mm -hmm. I believe. It's being, it's, I, I use the analogy of the uh, All Blacks in, in the rugby team, you know, and how the reason why the All Blacks are so good is because they're all selfless. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nobody that throws a dirty towel on the ground and says, hey, somebody else will pick it up. Mm -hmm. They all take the responsibility to clean up after themselves. And it's just small things. Nobody's a hero. Nobody's a superstar. Everybody's kind of got their role to play. Mm -hmm. And when you put it all together, you got one heck of a team, like the All Blacks. Mm -hmm. all right. and, and so I think that's an important aspect, is self-teaching and encouraging and rewarding selflessness. Mm -hmm. And during your, uh, your tenure, what, what's, what are some of the challenges that you were faced with? Oh, I think um, there, there's some big ones, but one of the ones that probably uh, still weighs heavy on my mind is, you know, when we were going up into uh, Iraq, uh, I, was, I was the operations officer for the division. Mm. The individual that was in command of one of the combat forces uh, was fired. Mm. And I took his job. Mm. Okay. And I did it in the middle of combat. I had to actually fly up to Baghdad, join the unit, tell them I was their new boss. Very difficult in an environment where really nobody really knew me. And the past commander had already kind of earned the confidence of his people. Right. 
but now he's gone, somebody else is in charge. How do you get that organization yeah. moving? Right. And, and I think the basis for that is that we had some common, we, had, we all had, came from a common foundation of being the United States Marine. Mm -hmm. We all had certain values that I think it was easier for me because I knew what was important to them, they knew what was important to me, so I think we could move on. Mm -hmm. And so that was a big challenge. Mm -hmm. and I think it turned out okay. Mm -hmm. I think so too. All right, we're here. So General Dwight Eisenhower said, the supreme quality for leadership is unquestionably integrity. Without it, no real success is possible, no matter whether it is a section gang, a football field, in an army, or in an office. How yeah. do you feel about that? I, I, we owe it to our people. Yeah. Yes. We owe it to them. They <coughs> got to know that they can trust us. Mm -hmm. if, if our integrity is in question, mm -hmm. then their well-being yes. is not going to be of interest to the leader. Right. The, and, the, and to be honest, Young, our, our, our folks, our young Marines and sailors, they understand, when they can tell when a leader really cares yes. and when it's just kind of, you know, faking it. Right. Um, so it goes back to what I said. I mean, people really want you to know how much you care mm -hmm. uh, rather than care how much you know. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about this is the similarities between that, that form and the form in business. Because, it, I mean, it's, it just goes hand in hand. Everything you've talked about is exactly the way it is in business as well, small and business or any other business. And that's so. what we teach. We have yeah. a, a vocational uh, school, and that's what we teach. You mm -hmm. know, you have to speak from the heart to touch a heart, and you have mm -hmm. to care. I don't care what you know. I need to know that you care for me because right. you can't do for me, but you can care for me. Right. Mm -hmm. No, I think there's certainly things that can be learned from the military to the civilian community, and and to be quite honest, vice versa. I mm -hmm. think I think we can learn from from the civilian community how things work. Mm -hmm. I, the, the 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 beauty of the military is that there's a starting point. You know, you have to go through a screening process. There's a boot camp where we we weed out those who we think don't have the resilience mm -hmm. to to you know, survive through yeah. a combat environment or right. whatever. Uh, and then we have a process of promotion and all that. Uh, and so I think it's pretty uh, well understood. I think in the civilian community, one, people move from company to company and organization yeah. to organization. So they don't have that, they got to figure out that foundation. Yes. What's making this organization tick? Yes. Where it's already understood in the military right. side of the house. Right. Right. And so I think that's really a challenge yeah. for young leaders that move into the business community. It really is, because that's one of the things that we talk about, how it's changed over the years. Because, you know, back in our day, it was it was the same model. But now, it's very different. People are moving from job to job every six months. Yes. And right. it's like starting all over again and not really creating that foundation. It's right. tough. The right. cohesiveness yeah. of a team is a key. Right. Absolutely. I mean, again, that's why I go back to the All Blacks again. I yeah. Mean, you want you want a team. You they, they you got to work work all the parts together, not an individual. Absolutely. No. So you know, looking back, um, what would you tell your, your if you were thirty again, for example? I know you got to think back. What would you tell I'd your? Think way back. Yeah. <laughs> that was just a couple of years ago, General. Come on. <laughs> so what would you like tell yourself back then, from looking from today's perspective? Right. Not to worry about the future. Mm. Focus on the here and now, the today. Mm. Look to your job, where you're, it's called it's sort of a bloom where you're mm -hmm. planted theory. Mm -hmm. Focus on that. If you start thinking about all the things in the future, yeah. life's going to go by. So true. And you mm. won't benefit from the experiences that you had. Yeah. I think the other thing, too, that's, is you've got to understand that when the job is over, you're still going to have your family. Right. And so you need to make sure that, yes, there's going to be sacrifices. Mm -hmm. You're going to make sacrifices, but that's okay. As long as you remember that you got to take care of that family. Because when, when I retire, who's going to be there? My yeah. wife, my kids, you know, and, that, and, and that's really what's, what's important. Interesting, because that was what, what it was with John, too, when he retired. We're going to come back to that and talk a little more about that in a moment. Thank you so much. 
We're going to take a short break. This is Keys to Success on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We're talking with Lieutenant General John Tulin Jr., who currently serves as the United States Marine Corps Forces Pacific's Commanding General. Regarding our theme today, I can, I will, end of story. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We'll be returning in a minute, so please stay tuned for more Keys to Success. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here. I know you're bored this summer. You're just sitting at home, figuring out what to do, go to the beach, spend some time with Think Tech Hawaii. Spend the time thinking about how you can contribute to Hawaii and making it a better place to live. And start watching some of the programs on Think Tech, including Stan the Energy Man, where you'll learn all about everything energy, especially hydrogen and transportation. So we'll see you every Friday at 12 o'clock noon. Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Chantal Seville, the host of the Savvy Chick Show. You can watch the show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Honolulu time and enjoy how to be inspired and empowered. If you're a woman or girl, everyone is welcome, but it's really dedicated to you. And we look forward to seeing you. You can also find us on thinktechhawaii.com. See you soon. Aloha. Aloha, how you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here, Gordo the Tech Star on Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Aloha. Good to, have you, good, to, good to have Andrew here in the house. Please join us every Friday from 1 to 1.30 and follow us up on YouTube. And remember, as we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing? Camera three, John. Whoa. Welcome back. This is Keys to Success on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We encourage you to call our hotline at 415-871-2474 to join our conversation or tweet us at thinktechhi if you have any questions or comments. We've been talking with Lieutenant General John Tulin Jr., <coughs> who currently serves as the United States Marine Corps Forces Pacific's Commanding General regarding our theme today, I can, I will, end of story. My name is Danelia. D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome back to the show. General Tulin, again, we're going to put you right to the test. <laughs> what can a civilian business owner learn from the implementation of some of the things that we do in the military model? I think uh, civilian business owners could probably look towards, first, the policy of screening and drawing in good recruits. What are you looking for? Understanding that you know there are certain things that you need in a person in order to do well in this job. Mm -hmm. And so that you gotta have some kind of screening process. I think uh, understanding the individual's family situation, their background, their schooling, I mean, all of that's important. Because all of those things, even the smallest minute things, like did you play sports in high school or are, are vitally important to really understand that person. Mm. And I think you want to have certain kind of people you can count on and rely upon. Mm. And so that screening process is critical. Mm. I also think though, transitioning from the civilian community or from, from one job to another, you really have to hold their hand and walk them through it. Mm. Don't, don't bring them into an organization, say here's your desk and go do your work. Mm. You need to check on them on a regular basis. You need to see how they're doing. You need to bring them in in the early stages because that's where you lose them. Mm -hmm. You lose them in that early stage because right. that's showing you care right. by, by saying, hey, how's the job doing? Why don't you come in and let's talk about you know, some of your questions that you might have. So I think that's very important. And then I think um, probably the most important is to make sure that you are recognizing their, their, their talents and their skills. Okay by what you say and what you do. In other words, by what you, the compliments you give them and also maybe what's in their paycheck as well. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I've seen it in the Marine Corps. Yeah. If you want if somebody to be a really good marksman, yeah. you offer $50 more extra in the paycheck yeah. for an expert, it's amazing then how the numbers will go up. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to you know, increase the salary. I right. think that's, that's a good incentive. Right. That's Bonuses. Right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, what is the red team concept and how can it be applied to a business in the civil sector? Now, red teaming is something that uh, we have tried to institute in, in all our planning. Is take the plan and now really put it to the test. 
throw every possible wrench you can into the plan, see whether or not that plan is resilient enough to mm -hmm. withstand those wrenches. Mm -hmm. And But you, what you need on a red team is you really need people that are totally disassociated from the organizational yes. leadership. There can be no, uh, you know, working for that individual. They, they have to be independent. Right. They, if you write in their evaluation, that's the wrong person. Right. Because the red team's got to come in and they got to be hard. They got to tear yeah. your plan apart. Yeah. They got to look for the holes, yeah. and then see how they how the other side responds. Mm -hmm. If we don't rehearse our plans, we'll find that we're we're going to make some serious mistakes. Mm -hmm. So, it's a talent. It's a skill. You got to have a special kind of person. Mm -hmm. You know, sort of the the people that are somewhat somewhat pessimistic, mm -hmm. people that always maybe see the other side of the coin. Those are the people that you need, mm -hmm. the contrarians, as the Brits call them. Right, right. So, so in, in business, you know, we always recommend uh, to business owners and to others, uh, you know, just in your life, to have uh, somebody or people in your life who will tell you the truth if you Absolutely. ask them a question yeah. and not just go with, oh, yeah, you know, you're doing fine, when in fact, no, you're not doing fine. You need to get back on course, you know. Exactly. It's very important. And in business as well to have... Um, you know, we have uh, individuals that we work with that are in other states that we actually, you know, have teleconferences with and say, well, we're thinking about doing this. They tell us what they're thinking about doing and then we shoot holes in it to work out the plan and get it down. And there's no question about the fact that you are very truthful about what you think about that. Yes. So, yeah, that makes a big difference in business. And yeah. the, the red teamers, the training that we give them is a large dosage of human behavior, mm -hmm. you know, to th trying to figure out how the human behavior works. Mm -hmm. you know, what are the variables associated? And mm -hmm. those red teamers really do study that yeah. and, and then apply it into the decision-making process. Yes. So. Yes. Yes, critical. All right. Now, our show is Keys to Success, and we have a signature question that we ask all of our guests, and I'll ask you the question now. What are your three top success habits, if you share that with us, sir? I think uh, my first most important habit is that I got to do the homework, particularly as a leader. Uh, oftentimes, I'll find myself in a, in, a, in a situation where I'm busy and I and I, I'm going to get a brief on a, on a plan, and I don't read the materials. And so, really, what I'm showing the people that did all the work is it wasn't important. I'll, I'll wait mm -hmm. to, for you guys to sit me down and try to work me through it, where I'll waste their time and my time asking. Mm -hmm questions that I could have answered if I had done my homework. Okay. So I believe that I always get to my, I have to, I have, to have a professional military education program. I got I to gotta have a reading program. I got to make sure that I'm staying ahead rather than lagging behind and waiting for my staff and my, my folks to keep me up to, up to speed. So doing my homework, I think, has always paid off because one, it helps people realize I think their work is valuable. But two, is I save time and I really show that I care. Mm. Okay. Um, I think the other thing is, is knowing my folks, knowing, knowing the people, making the habit of going to their spaces, their desks, their locations, not having them come to my palace, mm -hmm. my, my throne, mm -hmm. for, for me to go see them in their locations and, f and figure out, you know, okay, what's their workspace look like? How are things? Just really kind of taking an interest. Like this morning, I went to a ship and visited 58 Marines that just came back from Tonga and Fiji. Mm -hmm. uh, 58 guys, that's a small number of my total 83,000. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you that when they saw that I took the time to come and see what they've been living on as just ship for yeah. three months, yeah. go, hey, he, he cares. Big difference, yeah. Um, and then uh, I guess... Probably the third habit is I got to make sure that, and I don't know if you consider it a habit, but I try to be positive. Mm -hmm. I try to not be negative. I don't want to tell everybody the sky is falling. Hey, the budget's right. been reduced. <laughs> We're not going to have any money. Yes. You know, I, 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 yeah. I stay off of that. Yeah, right. They don't need to know they're that. Right, as right. long as they're getting a paycheck and they're getting to do their job, yeah. they don't have to worry about the worries that I have. Right. And I think that that brings a spirit of uh, camaraderie and laughter which yes. are, you know, good things. And okay. faith, and, right? Yeah. Absolute faith. Yes. Because, um, you know, if the leader starts falling apart, 
that everybody starts falling apart because then it's like, what do we do now? You've got to be strong as a leader. Oh, exactly. You know, no matter what you're feeling inside, exactly. you know, just got to be strong. So I want to get back to a little bit to the retirement thing because I think this is really important, you know, um, as far as uh, when, you know, there are a lot of uh, military individuals, not only military individuals, but also civil sector individuals uh, really have a challenge changing the mindset to go into retirement because, you know, we've been working, you know, 70 hours a week for how many years? 40. And all, you know, 40, <laughs> 40 years. But it's like, you know, how do you, how do you wrap your mind around that? And, um, how, you know, one of the things you mentioned was family, which is extremely important. Right. And how you do know? you mentally transition into that? Yeah. Right. Well, you have to uh, walk away and retire and realize that you're not going to be getting the phone calls and yes. the emails, and that in fact you may be tapping your BlackBerry saying, "How come nobody <laughs> sent me anything?" <laughs> and that you could yeah. be disturbed by that, yeah. or you could be satisfied. Right. That okay, well, you're slowing down. There's other things you can do. I I still think that in retirement, you need to have in your mind how can you still give back something. Right. Because you, let's face it, you're not. You're not going to forget all the things you learned over 40 years. Correct. And just like we're doing here, I mean, yeah. there are people we can continue to mentor and yes. share that information. Yes. So I hope to be able to stay busy with that. Right. But I know also, too, that there have been times when I've talked to some folks who keep telling me the same old story. I don't want to get that. I don't want to get to that point. Right, right, okay. right, right. All right. Uh, so, um, you know, we've, we're wrapping up. We've got one more question you can ask. Well, that went too quickly. <laughs> What I'd like you to do, General, if you would, uh, what counsel would you give our viewers and listeners uh, to help them and their keys move along with their keys to success? Mm. Well, I guess going back to the early part of our session here, I, I think trying to understand your strengths and your weaknesses mm -hmm. and making sure that you're aware of them. It, it's that self-awareness is something... I, I derived it from the, from the Jesuit tradition mm -hmm. of, you know, knowing yourself. Okay. And when you do, then you know where you can, where you need help and where you, you know, you can go off on your own. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm absolutely convinced that humility is, is a big part of this leadership business. Mm -hmm. if, if you come on, you could be a motivator and enthusiast and all that kind of stuff, but in the end, um, it's not about you. It's about the team about the organization and when you can when you're able to transmit that by your actions to the people who work for you i think you got championships coming down the pike thank well, you so well, much well said, General. General. thank you so much well we're we're out of time we'll have to wrap it up um i know that john would like to share a quote oh yes if you say so my dear uh i'd like to share a quote in closing from winston churchill and he said, destiny is not a matter of chance. It's not a matter of choice. It's not a thing to be waited for. It's a thing to be achieved. Thank you all. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>